Today we're gonna to talk about a squat myth that makes me so angry, I just wanna punch my computer screen every time I see it. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you one powerful exercise to help you improve your deep squat that I've never really talked about before. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I've talked a lot about the deep Asian squat, Slav squat, Russian squat, Gopnik squat, Peruvian squat, Hindu squat. Don't forget the minor squat. The minor squat, kimchi squat, the Arab squat, primal squat. All of these are just different names for squatting deep so your butt is close to the ground. Oh yeah, don't forget Emma. Oh yeah, Emma recently shared a great name that I had never heard of for the deep squat. It's Yanki Zuwadi. Are we gonna put subtitles on this? Yankee Zuari is how you say the Yankee squat or the delinquent squat in Japanese. In post-World War II Japan, a lot of Japanese delinquents liked to emulate American style. And those delinquents would hang out a lot sitting in the deep squat, chatting with one another, trying to look like James Dean. James Dean taking a poop. Which by the way, is another Japanese term for this position. Unko Zuari means poop sitting. Oh, perfect segue. And while we're on the topic of poo, do you think your squat is good enough that you'd be able to poo without using a toilet? Drop me a comment down below. I often see comments from people who have been infected with this mind virus, which claims that squatting deep is bad for you. This mind virus comes from doctors, physical therapists, even chiropractors and massage therapists, people who should know better, but whose educations have wiped their common sense. You sound a little angry. I'm not angry at the people, but I am angry that this idea keeps circulating and has spread so pervasively. So I wanna make sure you understand something very clearly. I really don't like this segment. It'll be over in a second. Your poo comes out of your butt. In order for your poo to get out of your butt safely and without smearing it all over your own legs, you've gotta get your butt away from your legs. You don't wanna have your butt directly over your feet, or your thighs. This is so mortifying. Before the invention of the Western toilet, how would you do that? Yeah, it's your turn. I don't think humans went around pooping like this. If you've ever had to hover over a dirty public toilet seat, you know how uncomfortable and how impractical it is to do this on a regular basis. Although now that I think about it, you'd probably develop pretty strong quads. Children get into this position all day, every day without any issue. People who live in countries where they still use squat toilets get into this position all day, every day without issue. It doesn't matter how old they are or how young they are. Old people and young people are able to get in and out of this position because they do it on a regular basis as a regular course of their daily lives. So when a doctor or a trainer or a physical therapist tells you squatting deep is not natural for some human beings, you know that they're full of whoop. Humans in the Western world who have become accustomed to sitting on Western toilets have hips and legs and ankles that have gotten a little bit weak, atrophied, and inflexible. That's why at the end of this video, I'm going to be linking to my full Asian squat playlist. It's all free, a whole bunch of videos to help you improve ankles, knees, and hips. But in this video, I'm gonna now show you an exercise I haven't shown before that's gonna help you improve hip internal rotation so that you can improve your deep Asian squat. So first I want you to understand what hip internal rotation is. This is your pelvis, this is a hip joint, another hip joint. The femur right here, this thigh bone, internally rotates like this, okay? That means that the front of the thigh is turning to point in towards the midline like that, okay? External rotation is like that. When you go into a deep Asian squat, your hip joints go into hip flexion, meaning the knee comes up closer to the chest and what needs to happen is the femur still needs to maintain that alignment where it's pointing at least kind of straight and up towards the sky or even a little bit in. What happens for a lot of people is as you go into hip flexion, the femur is getting pulled into external rotation and then you feel like you're just kind of stuck because your glutes and your hamstrings are just jamming up and nobody knows what to do. People who have been doing barbell squats and being told to externally rotate all the time train in this weird dysfunctional pattern that actually stops you from being able to do a deep squat. Over the last two decades, there was a huge trend for people to say, externally rotate when you go down into your squat, get your knees way, way out. But that creates a muscle firing pattern that is not helpful when you're actually trying to sit down to poo. 
just imagine trying to poo when you're keeping your glutes squeezed and you're firing and firing to try to get your knees out. This is not a comfortable pooing position and in fact, all that glute tension is probably gonna keep you all stopped up. What I hope you'll discover from the exercise I'm about to show you is that firing up your hip internal rotators is gonna help you sit in a relaxed, deep Asian squat position, and that means you'll have a nice unko zuari. Hey, I wanna say a big thanks to Mimitz, Jamie, Lou, Staffan, and Jorge for becoming stabilizing muscles to support me here on YouTube. If you wanna support me too, use the links you'll find in the description box or the join and thanks buttons here on YouTube. Now let's get back to it. You're gonna lie down on the floor with a yoga block or a stack of cushions, whatever you got to put your knee on. You are going to have the hips in flexion, okay? So it's around 90 degrees right here, but we're gonna play with that later. And then we're going to be lifting your foot and ankle up towards the ceiling. Okay, when you're doing this, you wanna to try to feel activity right here, okay? Towards the front of your body, on the side of the pelvis. That should be this area. So we're looking at the glute minimus, a little bit of medius, and the TFL. Those all live up front here on the pelvis. You wanna do this with control, you wanna do it slowly, and you wanna do it with some pauses up at the top so you can really feel those muscles complaining about what you're doing. When I first started doing this, I could barely get my shin parallel to the floor, but over time it has improved and it continues to improve daily as I work and work and work. One thing you wanna be very clear on when you do this exercise is that the motion is happening from the hip joint and not from you just pulling your pelvis up on the right side in towards the shoulder. So try to keep this open. You can try jamming away here. You can try stretching out this way. You can even try just blocking it this way so there's nowhere for it to go. And then just keep lifting, lifting. Ugh, yeah. Go until you get tired and keep track of how many it takes to actually get tired. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 20. If it's 20, then you should definitely start putting some weight on it. Put on a light ankle weight to start. Notice that I'm using a light ankle weight. I'm not using a 10 pound or even a five pound ankle weight to start with. Start with a light weight so that you know you can maintain good form and you're using the right muscles the whole time. Same setup here and just do the exercise the same way I showed you, making sure you feel the muscles in the right spot. Make sure you do this on both sides so you don't get all wobbly and asymmetrical. If you have one side that's weaker than the other side, make sure to do an extra set for that weaker side. Earlier I mentioned that we can play around with the amount of hip flexion and that is an important thing to explore because the deep squat requires you to control many different angles of hip flexion while still maintaining that hip internal rotation. So to do that, just play around with where you put the yoga block. You can put it higher, you can put it lower, you can even put it all the way down here to work on hip internal rotation with full hip extension. When you first start doing this, I suggest starting with twice a week with some rest days in between, maybe three days a week if it feels okay for you. Do two sets on each side and do a third set for your weaker side. And if you feel like you can handle the challenge without crippling yourself with soreness, use an ankle weight. After you've done these hip internal rotation exercises, I encourage you to then try out your deep squat. See how it feels. See where your sticking points now are. What many people will notice is that turning on these internal rotators makes this whole thing feel a lot smoother. I actually find that doing hip internal rotation exercises like this helps improve my squat and also my forward fold and my ability to touch my toes or punch the ground. Turning on these atrophied muscles helps you control your hip joints better. You feel safer, your body realizes that you actually control the positions and so you don't feel like you get stuck so much. Let me know what you notice in the comment section down below after you've done this exercise. I'm really excited to hear about it. Can we go have lunch now? Ignore him. I promised I would share the entire Asian squat playlist at the end of this video and here it is. To support this channel, use the links you'll find in the description box or use the join and thanks buttons that are on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on and as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.